Good morning. This is Thursday, July the 30th, and we're going to be talking about the normalcy of prayer. Uh, prayer ought to be a normal part, an uh, everyday part of a Christian's life as they commune in the Holy Spirit with the Father. So we're going to look at 1 Thessalonians uh, uh, 5 and 3 and 1 and Luke uh, 5 and 6 today. So we're going to be moving around a little bit, but uh, we're, we're going to get there. Let's begin with prayer. Father, thank you so much for this day, for the blessings of reading your word. May we know it, may we understand it, and may we have wisdom from above to live it. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says, Pray without ceasing. And that's what I mean by it ought to be the normal part of the Christian life. It ought to be normal for us to pray. It ought to be normal for us to talk to Jesus throughout the day, not just at certain times. Jesus had a discipline in his life. Luke 5.16 says he would withdraw to desolate places to be alone and pray. Places where there was nobody else around, unpopulated areas. When I lived in Maryland, uh, there was a, a Rock State Park right down the road from our church. And I would hike back up on uh, in the woods at that state park. And For Maryland, it was a mountain, uh, but it was really just a, a, a hill. And I would there was a place that overlooked off the trail the valley below, you might say, and there was a rock that jutted out. Uh, so you could sit there and, and look out over the valley. And I used to carry uh, my Bible there, and I'd tell the secretary, I'm going to pray. Call me if you need me. And I would go there, and I would sit and with my Bible and read Scripture and pray and talk to the Lord. We need a thing like that, a place like that. That's what Jesus had. And it was part of the discipline of his life. Luke 6, 12 says, In those days he went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. You see, you see this was a pattern. It was a discipline in Jesus' life. And we need to. Our, our flesh doesn't want to pray. And we will be bombarded by, by other people and what they expect of us to keep us from praying. Satan doesn't want us to pray. And so we need to discipline ourselves. We need to have a pattern in our life of prayer. Uh, he would go away by himself. It needs to be a time when we're away from everything else so there's no distractions. Uh, he would be alone. Uh, if I'm with Hope in the same room trying to pray, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of her. She's right there with me in the room. Uh, and, and it needs to be an enduring thing in our lives. So Jesus set this example by his life of it being a normal thing for him to talk to the Father. Now the church is disciplined. The church, the body of Christ, needs to discipline itself to pray. Uh, remember I said that our own flesh does not want to. Uh, society, our culture doesn't want to, Satan doesn't want to. So the body of Christ has to discipline itself to come under the uh, submitting to the Holy Spirit to pray. First Thess <coughs> excuse me. First Thessalonians chapter three verse 10 says, "As we pray most earnestly night and day that we may see you face to face and supply what is lacking in your faith. Paul says we pray night and day. We're disciplined to pray. 1 Thessalonians 1.11 says, To this end we always pray for you. It's not hit or miss or sometimes or when we come across the name or when, when the Lord reminds me, when I think of you, I pray. He says we always pray for fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that our God may make you worthy of his calling and may fulfill every resolve for good and every work of faith by his power. Our prayer needs to be earnest, it needs to be enduring, and it needs to be encompassing. 
our prayer needs to encompass everybody, uh, all brothers and sisters in Christ. We're to pray for leaders. We're to pray for the world. Uh, and we're not to stop. We're to continue to do this. And it needs to be heart, our heartfelt prayer, our burden to pray for people because of their great need. So I pray that as you develop a disciplined life, a life of discipleship, that you would discipline yourself to pray and that you would encourage and admonish and lead help lead your church to discipline itself to pray that we might use the power that God has for us the grace that God has for us the blessings that God has for us to live for him and to be lights and salt in this world may you be blessed as you discipline yourself in spiritual disciplines for the honor and glory of our great God.